Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your Thursday evenings before the Easter holidays uh, to attend this. Um, I'm James, I'm the Sports Development Manager for, for Barnet Southgate Cottage, and I'm joined tonight by Lloyd Gardner, who's uh, the Programme Director for our partner organisation, and, and Lloyd will tell you about himself um, in his presentation, but Lloyd's also the head coach for the Manchester Giants in the BBL League. Um, the way it's going to work tonight is, after in just a moment, Lloyd's going to talk to you uh, about the basketball element of the programme and what we what we offer, uh, and about the coaches and about his philosophies and, and basketball in general. Um, then I'm going to talk to you about the college more widely, about the sports at the college, about and about the academics and how it fits in and what courses you can do and, and those sort of things. And then we'll have uh, some time for some questions uh, at the end uh, of the presentation. And hopefully it shouldn't be too long, maybe 50 minutes or so, and then you can enjoy the rest of your evening. So um, there on the subject of questions, there's a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Any questions you can think of, by all means, pop them in that box and uh, we'll endeavour to answer them at the end. Anything you can think of, either now or throughout, there's no such thing as a stupid question. So ask whatever you like, basketball, college, whatever, and uh, stick it in the box. And that's it. So um, um, without further ado, I'll throw to Lloyd. Uh, Lloyd can come off mute, share his screen, and uh, I'll see you shortly. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, James. Let me um, try and share my screen with you guys real quick. So that, oh, I can eventually get to the right program. Here we go. So, yeah, hi, everybody. Um, as uh, James said, uh, my name's Lloyd Gardner. I'm the, the program director of the Basketball Academy. So um, plan on giving you just a little bit of information about the people involved, about the basketball philosophy before he speaks to you, um, more about the, the college side of things. Um, so to, to start with a little bit my, about myself, I am the, the head coach of the Manchester Giants, um, but team in the British Basketball League and in the Pro League here in the UK. Previously, I was the head coach of the London City Royals. Um, I've also been an assistant coach with the Great Britain senior men and the under 20 uh, junior men as well. Um, and then in my, my past, I was um, the director of basketball at Barking Abbey Basketball Academy, where I helped more than 100 players go to the US on basketball scholarships. And then I've combined that with a role at the Deng Top 50 camp as well. So even though I'm now involved a lot more at the professional game, um, I feed back in to the coaching staff that we have. I uh, manage them make, and uh, kind of oversee the program. Um, and I still have uh, a finger on the pulse of, of youth basketball where I was involved for, for a long time. So the two coaches we have that are there on a day-to-day -day basis, um, both have great experience as players and as coaches. First of all, coach Aaron Williams um, grew up in Camden um, with the Islington Panthers club um, playing National League played for myself at the London City Royals in the British Basketball League in the BBL. And he also, as you can see in that picture, has experience with the Sheffield Sharks when he was at university at Sheffield Hallam studying sports coaching. He also spent time in the US as a player um, at the high school level before returning and playing um, and studying here. He's now moved on to be coaching um, at Barnet and Southgate College. And then he works alongside coach Paul Edwards. So a former Division I National League player, Paul Edwards grew up with the, the famous uh, Hackney White Heat program as a player. He has now moved into coaching where he is one of the lead coaches for the Newham Youngbloods National League team. Um, as part of that role, Paul has developed a number of youth internationals, a number of players that have now started to go on to uh, either careers in the US or professional basketball careers as well. So two very high level coaches that we have leading the program, both uh, London based, both have been through similar programs and have the expertise as players and coaches to help improve individually all of the athletes that we have. 
So the uh, couple of things on the, the focused for us, you know, primarily the program that we offer at Barnet and Southgate is an increased provision of core time, practice time than students are usually able to access. So the majority of our students may be taking part in recreational basketball, or if they're taking part in National League basketball, maybe practicing once or twice a week. We, however, are taking that to the next level to try and help each player improve individually. So the program includes three team sessions a week. It includes two uh, skill sessions each week as well, and inclu includes um, you know, strength and conditioning. I'll get onto those details a little bit more, but for most of the players that we have, this is a step up on what they've been um, able to do formally in the past. So they may be passionate basketball players. They may do things recreationally where they go to the park or they play on their own. But having coached sessions and being advised throughout all of these hours is something that's kind of an extra step for them and helps them to improve and develop their own individual game. And that's you know point number two for us. Um, while the team aspect is important, while we compete and we want to win, it's very much an individual development focus. So right now on the program, we have students who come from a really wide range of basketball background. So we have, as I said, some national league players, we have some just school players, we have some that, that may play recreationally, um, but don't have massive experience within more elite basketball. Um, and, and for us, it's about he helping each of those individual players improve. So wherever it is that your starting point begins, it's helping them push and improve their individual level moving forward. And then hopefully um, giving them the opportunity to use basketball in their future, whether that's trying to help them um, narrow down university choices, whether that may be, you know, more elite pathway exits, such as going to America or professional basketball careers or even then to just increase that enjoyment of something that they do on a daily or weekly basis and, and help them improve their knowledge and understanding of the sport, sport that they may then use in the future, well, be it through coaching, refereeing, officiating, something along those lines. So each of the individuals for us um, are very much on their own unique journey. Uh, it, it may be that people are jumping on um, to Barnet and Southgate at different parts in, in their pathway, in their individual journey. But our job is to try and assist each person try to move along as much as they, they want to. Um, I mentioned, you know, the four aspects of, of our program. If I, you know, look at the, the bottom left to begin with, individual skill development said that we have a focus of, of morning sessions for each of the students that are um, small group workouts where each of the players will work on skill development. So maybe shooting, passing, dribbling, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, defense, any technical skill we will do um, through skill development sessions in those small groups. Uh, we then combine that alongside the team practices that we have three times a week. So within those team practices, we'll be doing more tactical um, development and understanding things like set plays, things like offenses and defensive schemes that we can use, uh, styles of play, uh, decision making is built a lot more into our team practices. So because we're able to divide those sessions up, and as we said, give an increased uh, hourly provision each week to our students, it means that generally when players who have experience of, of going to recognize sessions will do drills at, at the beginning of their session and games at the end, we're able to divide that into the two different sessions. So a lot of our drills and our breakdown work takes place in our individual school sessions. And then a lot of the games almost exclusively takes part in our team practices. So within those practices, we play a lot of either small-sided or full five-on-five -five games to help players improve. The other aspects, the competitive schedule that we have. So the vision is to continue to grow the program each and every year. Um, we play in the AOC leagues. So we're in the, the London AOC region at the moment. 
um, where we have been competitive. We were promoted last year. Obviously, the league uh, did not take part this year. We combine that as much as we can. The plan was to try and play some friendly games as well. Unfortunately, like everything, uh, COVID has, has put a, a, a stop to that this year. Um, but we use the games and the competition as an outlet to help our players improve. So the games are there as a vehicle that allows us to go against opposition, allows us to go against different people um, in our individual development phase. But having said that, as much as anybody, we're playing these games in order to be competitive. So as our program continues to grow, I know one of the questions was about an A and a B team. And that is something that absolutely we are looking to grow towards. Right now, the uh, numbers have meant, you know, this year we would have primarily played in the AOC with some friendly games for uh, players that may not have played a lot within the AOC competition. But the plan is to build it up to have two completely um, different teams, both with their own competition schedule as, as time goes on. The last aspect to the overview of our program is strength and conditioning. So through our relationship at Barnet and Southgate with the NFL, we're able to access the, the fantastic uh, weight room facility on campus at Southgate, where our players can um, receive access to arguably one of the best uh, weight room facilities in uh, college or schools uh, basketball programs. Um, and it's something that we're looking to build on year on year so that not only are we improving the technical and tactical aspects of each student, but also the physical condition as well. Combining those four things together, as we see, gives us a pretty full program, allows us to really try and push on the level of what we're doing. And uh, we feel is able to provide, you know, pretty much every aspect of a, a more elite program that students may be looking for. Um, James will, I think, cover the next stages for recruitment. Um, you know, but I often get asked what we're looking for in, in the student athletes at Barnet and Southgate. And I would say, you know, primarily the, the most important things for us is, is the ability to be coached. So we want players that are hungry to, to learn from the coaches, to listen, to be able to try and take on board what they're told and try to implement it. And then also those who have an attitude that, that wants to, to play the sport. So, you know, those players that are keen, they turn up, they try um, to the utmost of their ability. If you have those two things, then I think within Barnet and Southgate, we have the provision that can uh, help a number of student athletes across the spectrum, no matter where your basketball ability is, whether it's at the top end and you're looking to move on to, you know, the more elite sides of the game, or whether it's simply been at a lower end and it's something that you're keen to get involved in in the future. Okay. So I'm sure there may be some questions that I can get to later on, but as James said, anything that you may think of, please feel free to, to put into the, the box, uh, into the Q&A box along, uh, that you can see, and I, I can get to answering them at the end. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And uh, James, if you are there, I will pass it to you. I'm here, yeah. Just wait for my video to come back on, even though I have put it back on. Um, try again. There we go. Uh, thanks for that, Lloyd. Uh, let me share my screen. Do, do, do. Here we go. So Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's told you all about the, the basketball and, and given you an overview of basketball specific stuff there. So I'll talk to you about uh, the college and uh, the sports department and, and everything more widely there before we move on to questions. So um, firstly, you'll see the BSC Bears emblem there. So this is just our sort of brand identity. So when you when you see BSC Bear stuff, you'll know it refers to the Barnet Southgate College Sports Department. Um, this is something we have created well, about seven years ago now, I think, something like that. Trying to sort of mimic that uh, American collegiate uh, feel uh, and particularly 
in the sport of basketball, it's something that's more uh, common parlance, really. So more more commonly used uh, those, those kind of naming uh, situations. So um, basketball is definitely one that is sort of buying into it more than some of the others. Obviously, with some of the other sports, we have uh, quite big brand partners with their own uh, logos and stuff. So it's not not so used. But with the basketball, BSC Bears. So. Who are we? So we are BSC Sports is the sports department for Barnet Southgate College. Uh, we're the largest sports department, one of the largest sports departments in the UK and London, uh, and also certainly one of the most successful uh, in the UK. And, and how do I quantify that statement? So it's over three things. It's the amount of the volume of learners that we have associated with sports uh, at the college, either in the sport the academic side of the department so uh, studying a sports course through to the amount of student athletes we have associated with our various programs um, all our academy programs and then finally the amount of success we've had from those uh, those academy programs across the sports whether that's progressing students on into the higher education uh, field in, in student athletics so um, whether that in the UK or in the US, through to the amount of team titles, national titles, individual titles uh, that we've been achieved that have been achieved in the last ten years, um, or through into the professional game. Uh, in some sports, uh, we have quite a large track rec- track record of um, producing professional athletes in, in a few of the sports. So that's how we quantify that statement, really. The college uh, is spread across North London um, in terms of its delivery locations. So we have the Southgate campus in Enfield, uh, the Wood Street campus in High Barnet and the Collendale campus over in the west of Barnet. Now, what you study academically dictates what uh, campus you are based at. So the sports department is the predominant, Southgate campus is the predominant base for the sports department. as well as a few other things. Um, and that's where the sort of meet location is for all the, the sports academies and, and where the gyms are, etc. Uh, the Wood Street campus is where A-levels are based, um, business, um, creative media, and a few courses like that. And then we also have the Colonel campus, which is uh, for construction, hair and beauty, uh, and things like that. So what what curriculum area you study dictates what campus you're based at. Um, whilst officially you can do any course at the college and be on the basketball programme, in reality there's more more narrow choice. So really, and, and also it's just generally follows that most of the student athletes fall into one of these course areas and those usually are a sports department course, so a BTEC or MBQ or YMCA, one of the sports department course areas to um, A-levels, an A-level study program, so that's possible, um, three A-levels, or a business course, one of the BTECs in business, etc. So I'll come on to more about those in a second. Um, last thing at the moment, the sports department covers everything from the academic side to the non-academic side. So I manage the non-academic side of sport, and then we have the curriculum team uh, who sit uh, with us, but manage the curriculum side of things. So what do we do? So when you come to the college on one of these academy programmes, you are in something called a study programme. So that is a combination of your different ingredients that constitute your college life and what you do associated with the college. So um, the main component is, of course, your qualification. So whether that's a BTEC or A-levels or whatever it is you're studying, that's your main component, not your qual. Then we have, of course, the academy coaching and whatever sport you're in, in this case, basketball. Uh, that constitutes quite a large part of it as well. Then we have English and maths. If you haven't achieved a grade four in your GCSEs, you still have to redo your English and maths. Um, work experience, depending on the course area you do, if it's a BTEC, you, you'll have to do a degree of work experience throughout the academic year. And then finally, it's your tutorial program. So your, uh, your tutor sessions with uh, your curriculum area teachers, um, but also things like the learner services uh, packages on knife crime, finances, whatever, university transference, whatever it might be. Uh, We partner with some industry leading bodies to deliver these programmes, so the academy programmes, and then hire the the facilities to to base them out of. Uh, And of course, in the basketball, Lloyd's already gone into um, his setup and and the the value of the staff we have there. 
And on that subject, I always say with these talks that our staff are one of the, the major selling points of what we do uh, here at BSC. So all of our staff, both within the college and certainly within our partners, have got a huge degree of experience um, and knowledge, know-how and contacts within within the industry. So it's already been discussed, the, the CVs of the people uh, we've got associated with us in the basketball program and, and Lloyd most of all. Um, as a college, a lot of us are still working in industry alongside our main full-time roles at the college. So we have high-level personal trainers, we have sports rehabilitators, we have uh, professional physiotherapists with the FA, we have uh, currently practicing coaches. I myself work for the Premier League outside of uh, my main job with the college, working with the football academies and, the, and first teams recently with COVID as well. So all that knowledge, all that experience is brought back into um, help develop the programmes that we offer at the college and, and for ultimately for the betterment of the students, of, of you students who are on the programmes. So what are we preparing you for? Essentially the next step. We're preparing you to progress to the next level um, what's in, in, in numerous areas. So mainly that comes into your vocational qualifications. So you're here to get your BTEC or your A-levels or your academic qualifications, whatever it might be. We clearly want to progress you through that, which will lead on to university perhaps in the UK or the US, uh, or it could be into employment. Um, clearly we want to progress you in the sport um, and whatever avenues that takes you down. And ultimately, outside of those things, outside of the court and outside of the classroom, uh, we're trying to develop you and prepare you for the next level in your life to develop those life skills, becoming an independent and responsible adult and um, helping you that give you those behaviours and, and create that environment that's going to make you successful in whatever you do after us. So these are some of the partners that we work with across the various uh, academy programmes. They all function in a very similar way. So they're about embedding training and a games programme, competition programme into the study programme. The levels are dependent upon which programme you're in, whether it's four training sessions a week, whether it's three, whether it's two, whether it's a games programme involved or not. Lloyd's already gone into the, into the volumes of the basketball around the three team training sessions, the two individual training sessions and the games programme. So, um, but they all function in that similar kind of philosophy. So a brief history of uh, on the basketball uh, side. So we're in our, we've actually had basketball at the college for a long, long time, but it's only really been an academy in the last 10 years. Um, and we're, we're in the sort of midst of a reboot of it, really, I guess, and, and a new direction with a real ambitious future. Um, you know, Lloyd and I are always discussing how can we develop the basketball offer how can we improve it? how can we go to the next level and with these plans and these five-year plans about okay where do we see ourselves in this period of time and wanting to be an EABL program wanting to be an ABL program wanting to have certain ambitions and what it's going to take to get there so um we can we, we changed our relationship with our previous uh, partner and when it entered into a new one with London City Royals in 2019. And that's how uh, Lloyd and I came to meet and get involved. And um, whatever happened with the Royals, um, which you can go online and research, it's really led to a brighter, brighter future for us as a college programme and something we're excited about for the future. I'm not going to develop all too much on, on this uh, topic with the curriculum. Suffice to say that whatever course area you're interested in um, for, to study whilst you're on this program, you can go on the Barnet and Southwick College website and watch back uh, each curriculum area's specific talk uh, on the virtual open events that we held at the start of March. So if it's A-levels, you can go and watch the A-levels. If it's business, you can go watch business. If it's sports, you can go and watch uh, the talk I did with uh, a colleague from the curriculum team on the sports department, which You'll hear a lot of the same information you hear tonight, but there'll be some more in-depth stuff on the academic side. But whatever it is you're interested in, you can go back and watch those talks about how those areas specifically develop their curriculum and what you learn there. 
So the academic offer uh, as part of this, as I said, officially you can do any uh, course. Unofficially, really, you're looking at either a sports department course either a, or an A-level study programme or, or business, really. Um, so in terms of the sports department, we offer three, we, we offer the following BTEC. So we have the BTEC level one, level two, level three, and level three extended diploma. So the level three and level three extended diploma are the highest qualifications. The level one is the lowest. So starting at the level one and whatever you get in your entry in your GCSEs this summer and that gives you your entry requirements, your criteria, that will dictate what level you come in at. So if you get two GCSEs uh, of any grade, you'll be coming in at the level one level, which is the level one introductory diploma in sport. That's a one year qual. The idea is you have a good year and that you move up. And then in the second year, you would do the BTEC level two. Alternatively, if you get four GCSEs, grades nine to three, you can come straight in at the level two level. That's also a one year qualification. And if you do that for a year, the idea is to move up again after that year. And we have the level three diploma or the level three extended diploma. So the level three diploma is a two A level, a two A level equivalency course. And the extended diploma is a three A level equivalency course. They're both level three courses. The difference between the two is the extended diploma you do more modules, hence it's worth more UCAS points. The entry requirement for the uh, level three diploma is five GCSEs, grades nine to four, and the extended diploma is six GCSEs, grades nine to four, including maths and English. Okay, so if you get six GCSEs, including maths and English, at grades nine to four, you go straight onto the extended diploma. Uh, and if it's five, then the, the diploma, and they're two year quals. We also have a new uh, offer on the academic side of things in the sports department, which is uh, an eSports course. So it's the level three extended diploma in eSports with the same entry requirement as the extended diploma in sports. On the vocational side, we have the level two MVQ certificate in activity leadership and coaching. So that's a one year qual, same entry requirements as the BTEC level two. But it's a much more practical based course. So you're going into schools, you're going into community events, you're delivering, um, uh, you're delivering to participants and you're building up that experience by doing. And you're building up a portfolio of work and evidence uh, and learning your trade on the job, so to speak. You do your underpinning knowledge back at the college and then you go out and deliver. The YMCA we also then have the level two YMCA diploma in personal training and gym instruction. And we also have the level three YMCA diploma in personal training and gym instruction. So they're both one year courses, but you have to start, unlike the BTECs and where you start at whatever level you get the entry requirements for, you have to start at the level two level for that because it's an industry specific qualification. Um, so much like in basketball, for example, you can't go straight in and become a level three basketball coach. You have to do your level one, level two, same goes for this. So you have to start at your level two, um, which is five GCSEs, grades nine to four. And then you do that for a year. And then after that year, you can move up to the level three YMCA in personal training and gym instruction. Once you've achieved the level three, you are a fully qualified personal trainer uh, and you can start your own business, take clients, become a gym manager, all those things. So these that's a great qualification to have. They're all great qualifications to have. What I would say about these vocational ones, the MBQ, the YMCAs, if you want to go to university, these are not the courses to do. You have to go down the BTEC route or A-levels, for example. With these ones, then it's if you definitely want to go into those employment areas. What some uh, students do is if they come straight in at the level three or the level three extended, they'll do those qualifications for two years, get a good grade. And if after that they decide uh, I don't want to go to university yet, or I don't want to get a job yet, or I'm not sure what I want to do, I want to get another year, particularly on the sports program, uh, then they might do a YMCA um, for their final year in terms of their final funding year. So they'll have they'll, end, they'll exit college after three years, but with two qualifications. On the A-level side, these are the um, subject areas we've got in the A-level department. Uh, very large selection. Um, not much we don't offer really other than modern foreign languages uh, and geography and drama, I think. But everything else we do offer, including PE. So if you want to do PE as an A-level, we do offer that. The entry requirements for A-levels is six GCSEs, grades nine to four, including maths and English. And they generally like grade sixes in the subjects that you want to study. 
interviews are conducted for A-levels. They are for in different formats for a lot of the course areas. Um, you can, if you've started A-levels elsewhere, I'm not sure the, the nature of your individual circumstances on this call, but if you started A-levels elsewhere, you can uh, look to join the second year as direct entry and carry them on, as long as the awarding bodies and exam bodies that you're taking at your current place are the same and the modules all fit. Uh, otherwise, you can start again. What you can't do is have done two years of A-level somewhere else and look to retake your second year with us. You can't do that, I'm afraid. So you may have seen the, um, the TAS logo earlier. Uh, just a, a little mention of that. So that stands for Talented Athlete Scholarship Scheme. Um, and that's purely looking at talented athletes who are international, national, or regional level in their sport and age 16 to 24 and are still in education. So TAS as an, as an organisation work with those talented athletes through the national governing bodies and mostly the university sectors to provide additional support um, for those talented athletes to varying levels, depending on how much uh, they're awarded. Um, a few years ago, they launched a secondary scheme called the Dual Career Programme, um, which accredits institutions rather than giving money to athletes. It accredits institutions, there's no money in it, but it essentially is a, is a symbol of excellence to say that if you're 16 to 24 in education um, and you're a talented athlete, you should go to one of these accredited institutes because we have a talented athlete policy, we know how to look after student athletes, we provide additional support workshops, um, things like anti-doping, nutrition, psychological workshops, whatever it might be, to really ensure that the student athletes we have with us are successful both in their sport and in their academics, and they're not having to fight a battle between the two. So if you need to go away on camps, you can go. We have all approached the uh, academics flexibly. Um, we were the first FE college in the country to have that status and we're still the only uh, FE college in London and the South East, or I think one of two actually, to have that status. We have a physio clinic at the college, um, run by Jack, who's the half physio, half teacher, but is a brilliant professional sport as a physiotherapist for probably nine and 30 years. And he has a team of uh, undergrads working underneath him. So any knocks, any niggles, you would be expected to go and get free treatment there. Um, we also have two gyms at the Southgate campus so Lloyd's already mentioned the NFL Academy gym we also have the original gym uh, which is free entry for the student athletes so if you have a training program written or you want a training program written for you you can have that and you can drop in there at any time uh, and go and do that while, whilst it's open the NFL Academy gym it's purely bespoke S&C sessions with an S&C coach whereas the original gym is staffed by Emily uh, she can help you or you can just go and do your own thing uh, while you're there. We help students with the transportation. So uh, if you're studying at the Wood Street campus, we provide transport from Wood Street to Southgate. And then we transport all our students to the training locations from Southgate to the training location. And to all fixtures as well. So just finally, what do we expect in return for all this? Uh, boils down to four things. Apply your, uh, turn up, turn up on time, apply yourself and meet your coursework deadlines. Uh, and if you do those four things, a lot of time, effort, money, knowledge, um, experience is invested into these various programmes that we offer to give you great opportunities to improve you both as a student, um, as, a, as a player and as a person. But ultimately, the academics need to come first. So if you're not doing what you need to do in the classroom, you will start to have to be withdrawn from fixtures or withdrawn from training if it comes to it, or there will be measures put in place to, you won't get those opportunities unless you're brushing up on your academics because you're here to achieve your qualification. And if you don't achieve your qualification, then we've not done right by you. And particularly in the sport of basketball, uh, as Lloyd will, will uh, testify if you've got ambitions in the sport and you're talented enough to have uh, opportunities in the sport you have to have your academics right you're not going to go to the states on um, on a scholarship unless your academics are exactly right we we have a lot of experience of this through the nfl academy um and we talk regularly with the ncaa if you want to get to a div one ncaa school 
our university in the States, which is where the big leagues are. Um, if your GPA is not right, if your SAT score is not right, it doesn't matter. You could be the next LeBron and you're not going to get in there. Um, so the academics have to come first. And that's that's that really on the as a whistle stop tour of everything we offer. So hopefully um, there's been questions coming in. Uh, I'll have a look now and let's I'll stop sharing my screen. There we go. So I can see we've got quite a number of questions. So Lloyd, you can <coughs> come off mute and turn your camera back on. And let's have a look at the questions. So uh, question number one, uh, do you have a basketball A and B team? So Lloyd kind of referenced a little bit of that uh, in his talk. So do you want to re reiterate that, Lloyd, I guess? Yeah, I would, I would just uh, to kind of reconfirm um, the, the A and the B team, essentially at, at the moment, the team practices as one squad. Uh, we have two courts. So... Uh, at the moment, depending on the number of students that are there for each session, that might do things combined or they might separate, but, but there is not an A and a B team as such um, at this moment in time. If the numbers continue to grow and as the programme grows, we may uh, have to branch out into that. But at the moment, it's just, it's just one combined programme. There's a couple of other questions here as well. How do you yeah. get an elite? The, the elite programme is essentially the same. So everybody works together. There may be elements of it that are divided up, as I say, across the two courts, but primarily everybody is, is working together. Um, so, yeah, well, I'll, I'll work through the questions. Loads. So we do, um, can we do A-levels at the Wood Street campus and still attend the academy? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. And following on from those questions that you were answering there, Lloyd, say if you're uh, how do you get a scholar or play for a professional basketball team? I think that's what you were going to move on to. Then. Yeah, oh, sorry. So first of all, we need to be good enough. <laughs> that's that's the reality in order to be uh, to get a scholarship or to be scouted to a professional team. That is, is everything. You have to be good enough, which um, is, you know, the, the most important thing. Generally speaking, after that, it would be exposure to the right people. So in terms of going to America, it would be making sure that you're able to market yourself to colleges in America to let them that know that you're interested. Uh, that's something that we can assist with, um, with our players. Um, and so, and just in terms of educating yourself of the process of going to America, you would need a, a highlight tape, you would need a game tape. Uh, we at Barnet Southgate film all of our games so we have that footage available that if somebody is good enough then we can help them with footage that they can then send to coaches in America so they can assess you and similar process really with the BBL it would be a matter of uh, you know proving yourself at the level that you're playing at continuing to try and move upwards um, from our program it would primarily be into the national men's leagues that you would be looking to take the next step before then you would look to, to go to the BBL, really. There's a question about the girls program as well. We, we had one question about this before. I, I would say we don't, at the moment, we don't have enough girls to run an entire team. Um, we would love to have enough girls to run an entire team. If we felt that, that there was enough, we would do it. I, I believe we're able to accommodate individual girls players onto the program. But it would mean that obviously they would you would struggle for the competition schedule, so you wouldn't be allowed to play in the games. Um, and unless we were able to to you know recruit enough players to play games, we would struggle. But I think we could incorporate players into the skill sessions and also the the team sessions as well. Yeah, it's so a bit of a chicken and egg type question, really. It's sort of do we launch a girls? section girl section program uh, and hope to recruit for it or do we see if we happen to recruit enough girls and start providing for them really Daniela so it's as Lloyd said we've not had a girls program up to now we would absolutely love one but we've not necessarily taken the steps to launch one as such because of, we haven't have to ascertain that interest first um how many times can you use the gym facility in the college? Well, I, I think I'm, I answered that one really in my section. So the NFL Academy is purely within bespoke um, 
uh, S&C sessions and then the uh, original gym is uh, open a number of times a week, uh, five time, five days a week, um, and you can drop in within opening hours and access it whenever you like, whenever you're free. Um, to play for the rules, do you need to be scouted? Well, the rules don't exist anymore, Mark. Um, that was they, that that was uh, the club went uh, out of business into administration. Um, but in terms of if you're asking about the BBR, I think Lloyd's already covered that. And clearly, with Lloyd's current position, you know, you couldn't you couldn't ask for a better way to be scouted. I guess if you're of that level, you know, you're right under the nose, so so to speak. Um, this question's been answered again, but we've already answered about the A level. So that looks like most of the questions. The only other um, question that's not been asked, but I think it's probably just been forgotten, which often does get asked, is regarding, is regarding kit. So um, we work with, uh, presently and this year, we've worked with uh, a bespoke basketball brand called Always Balling um, to develop our own bespoke training wear um which lloyd has facilitated through his contacts and um and sorted out so we've actually created a basketball handbook um which we can send on to everyone which and some of that shows a little bit of some of the items um but uh, yeah we have a, a sort of package various different packages for for training wear that you could uh, have the opportunity to purchase or you're expected to purchase i should say um, if you are a bursary student, so if your students are under a certain income threshold and you're eligible to apply for the bursary and there is financial support packages at the college, uh, one of those is a learner support fund grant. So if you're studying sport and you uh, are awarded that grant, you actually get the kit for free. So um, that's a package. Anything you want to add on the kit there, Lloyd? No, I don't. I don't think so just uh, we'll, we basically break it down into different items so you can purchase as much or as little as you you'd want and as you said if if you're able to access the funding it would pay for the entire package which is you know short sleeve long sleeve t-shirts reversible kit track suit uh backpack so the entire the entire uh student offering great well if um if that's all the questions which i believe it is can't think of anything I've missed there. So the only other thing that people might be interested in is uh, any upcoming trials. So we uh, we're just digesting the government roadmap in terms of what we when we're allowed to resume indoor sport. Our current program is allowed to resume because it's part of the educational provision. Um, but we're just seeking clarification from the national governing body with regards to when we can next hold um, an indoor trial. We know for sure it's at least at the very latest from post May the 17th but there's a chance it might be before that but if you've applied for the program uh, which I know looking at the names a couple of people have uh, on the attendees here if you haven't applied for the program uh, Nick hopefully has or will put in the chat the link to the sports registration page um, and you can apply for the program through that. And that means that I will contact you and Lloyd will contact you when we arrange that next um, trial day uh, and give you all the details for that. If you have applied for the program, you don't need to apply again. Um, you're on our list, so to speak, but make sure you check your emails because um, most of the communication is done via email. So check your emails, check your junk folders, just in case it's gone into there for further details. But um, as soon as we organise or know know what we can do, we will organise something, and we want to get people on the court um, playing some playing some ball. Um, anything on that one, Lloyd? That I've missed? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Just obviously get your applications in, so then we can stay in contact and and kind of as soon as we can get get things going. Cool. The last thing I would say is also. By all means, apply if you haven't done already for the college as well for your courses. Again, Nick will put in the chat box uh, the links to the uh, academic courses um, pages. You can apply for as many courses as you want at whatever levels you want. Uh, it's just an application. You can make multiple applications. Um, it only comes down to enrolment that you pick ultimately what you end up doing. Um, 
because we're having to do recruitment and all these kind of things in a slightly different way because of COVID, usually we embed it embedded in part of the day about your course application. But um, it helps now if you've done that uh, independently yourself and, and apply through the website and that means you're in the system and the course area can can start to notify you, send you conditional offers, schedule interviews, whatever it might be. Um, and yeah, so I think that is everything, I believe. So unless there's any final questions, doesn't it? there is. Um, thank you for taking the time this evening and um, we'll be in touch with those who've applied about the next trial day as soon as possible. Thank you very right, much. Thanks. Bye everyone. Night. Bye.